everyone and welcome to day one of my vlogging challenge. Um, today we've got lots of uh, bits and bobs to be doing out and about away from the house and whatever so uh, first thing off to feed the horses. Tangle sit. Hmm. Yes I don't know what's happened with this training with this little dog. She has a mind of her own. Tangle sit. Tangle sit. Sit! Sit! <coughs> Just interested in what your pals are doing in the field. Off the way to spend a Tuesday morning packing out your trusty steed in the beautiful Herefordshire countryside. So, riding uh, along a bridle path now down the bottom of the neighbouring farm, which is a, it's a very nice route. It's, it's great to bring the dogs around here because um, they don't have to go on the road. Tangle, you a nice walk? Tiggy, you're going to nose around in there. So here we have Anna, all nicely washed, desperate to go back out in the field to see what her pals are up to. Anna, no tail wash for you today though. What do you think? You got water in your ear didn't you? And what are you two up to? Making a right old mess! Oh look at that! Absolute chaos! So all my horse jobs are done for the day and it's time now to go to town to uh, pick up some ingredients for work this afternoon. So I'm back from doing the horses and my shopping. I'm just going to have some lunch. It's uh, one o'clock and I'm ravenous. <laughs> haven't had anything all day so um, no wonder. So for lunch today I am having um, some salad, some green leaves, some carrot and beetroot salad and a little pie from legs which is chicken bacon, red pepper and curry. So it should be tasty. So dehorsed and showered and cleaned up now ready to get on with some work and this afternoon I've got to make some dope wild potatoes for a shoot dinner on Thursday. Um, for any of you that haven't made dope wilds, don't know what they are, it's the creamy sliced garlic potatoes um, sometimes called gratin dope noir or pomme dope noir or whatever you might call them, wherever you are. Um, so that's what I'm going to make this afternoon and I'll just show you now what I'm going to put in them. So for more potatoes, obviously you need potatoes. Um, normally, I'm sorry the washing machine's going right now as well, I hope that's not too loud. So normally you would peel the potato and thinly slice, however I have found I don't need to peel the potatoes. Um, because you're slicing them so thin, it's only a tiny bit of potato skin um, around the slice and when it's cooked it just sort of seems to disappear so save it a time there's a tip for you you don't need to peel them 
So, potatoes, as many as you need to fill the dish. Garlic, obviously. Um, again, this is to taste. I generally do one decent sized clove per layer of potatoes. Uh, then, moving on, butter. It can be salted or unsalted. Obviously, if you use salted, you just don't need to add as much salt to each layer. So just bear that in mind. Double cream, which you add at the end to, to about two thirds of the depth of the dish. So I'm gonna crack on and make those now, and I will show you them before they go in the oven. So as you can see, almost onto the final layer of my dauphinois potatoes. Uh, and then I've grated on some garlic, it doesn't matter, it's in bits because the cream will disperse it throughout the whole uh, the whole dish when it's cooking. So I'm going to add a little bit of um, pepper. Uh, sorry for the lighting, it really is bad. A little bit of salt, as I say, not too much because I'm using salted butter on this occasion. So add in the butter. It's strange doing this one-handed. It doesn't need to be too neat or even because the during the cooking everything will um, sort of spread out evenly. Um, so then finish off with a final layer of potatoes all over the top. And I also try and keep the largest potatoes for the top layer. Just um, covers it a bit better. I don't think anybody ever notices though. As you can see the slices aren't that thick so there's not a lot of skin there um, to worry about and when it's cooked you really don't notice it. Final little sprinkling of salt and a sprinkling of pepper. Finish it off. Try to hold the camera properly. Very difficult doing this one-handed. So, open up my double cream. And as I say, I normally aim to fill the dish two-thirds full. Just pouring it evenly around. Obviously, um, you probably know that potatoes, when they're sliced, and they touch the air, the starch in them goes black. So ideally you want to get all the potato, layers of potato covered in, um, in cream and it will just reduce that a little because um, it just, just doesn't look that, that nice, does it? But I still think we need a little bit more cream. So I'll just pour a bit more on. It's always deceiving how much cream you need because it has to seep in between all the layers. So my potatoes are ready here to go in the oven. I've got them on a baking tray to make it easier to hold them and if they leak, it doesn't spoil my oven. I've got a layer of tin foil with a layer of grease proof underneath and some extra blobs of butter. Once they go in the oven, I'll be baking them at about 200 degrees for about an hour and a half or until the potatoes are tender. Um, I don't need them to be browned at this point, hence why I'm covering them so well in greaseproof paper and tin foil, um, because I'm gonna reheat them on Thursday and brown them then. So, now for dessert. Thursday evening, they've requested Bakewell tart, which is something I make quite regularly. It's a big favourite of Francis's and it keeps really well, so it's perfect for making in advance. It's great served warm or cold, very straightforward to make, does involve a few stages, however. So, in this pan, I have some margarine, and you could also use butter if you wanted. So, I have caster sugar, followed by ground almonds and ground rice. The ground almonds, um, I have ground myself in my mini Magimix. At the moment, no shops seem to be stocking ground almonds, so I don't know what the rush has been um, on them, but I haven't been able to buy any. So I bought flaked almonds instead, and I've ground them myself. So I add the ground almonds and the ground rice, stir that all together. Then I'll add some almond flavoring and some eggs, and that will give me my frangipan layer to go in the tart. So now my frangipan is made, all the ingredients have been added, 
and I've got my blind baked pastry case with raspberry jam. I'm going to add the frangipan mixture to the, to the case, pouring it evenly all the way over the jam. It's now just ready to have some flaked almonds sprinkled on the top and then it can be baked in the oven for roughly 30 minutes at 170 but I do generally always check at about 15 to 20 minutes to make sure it's not catching at any any points or cooking unevenly um, so I can just then turn it before I I finish off the baking. So there is the um, Bakewell tart all ready to go in the oven. So the Bakewell tarts have come out of the oven now and they're looking pretty good if I do say so myself. I'm very happy with those. So it's a bit later now and I am cooking some supper for Francis and I. Um, he's not home from work yet um, but it's underway so hopefully he won't have to wait too long before he can eat this evening. Uh, we're going to have a chicken dish which is it's my take on a Mary Berry recipe uh, which is titled chicken with lemongrass. So it's sort of like a spiced chicken casserole type thing but just made in a frying pan. Doesn't look uh, the most enticing thing but it's I suppose it's just chopped up garlic, coriander, um, some pepper dew, peppers, red pepper, mushroom and some chicken stock so I'll let that cook down for a while and then when Francis gets home I'll just add the chicken and cook some rice and uh, cook some vegetables and that'll be our supper so I'm going to go and do a bit more editing now so that I'm ready to upload in a few hours. Also, I forgot to say, uh, I have taken the dopamine potatoes out of the oven. And this is them in the dish. They look, look rather creamy, um, but that will all evaporate off and dry out a little bit when I come to bake them again on Thursday and brown the top. So dinner is ready. My take on Mary Berry's chicken with lemongrass, peas and Basmati rice. Anyway, so I'm almost at the end of editing my first vlog and I just need to now find a few bits of music to lay over the top of some of the sections and then it'll be ready to upload. So I'm going to sign off and say goodnight. See you tomorrow.